Hello everybody, I have Mark joining me today and we are gonna be talking all about kind of the non-technical skills that you need to scale an RPA solution. But before we dive into the questions that I have for you today, Mark, would you mind giving everybody an introduction? Yeah, hi Emma, and uh, thanks for having me on this week. Uh, yes, Mark Barrett, so I'm from Automation Outcomes. Uh, essentially, we're a services provider focusing on the RPA, RPA market over here in the UK. Um, I've got about 25 years experience of working with technical orchestration and automation type technologies. I've worked through a number of technologies in this space. Started out 20 odd years ago working with a, a technology called Citrix, which was a, a transformational technology to allow people to access systems from without geographical borders. And back then, when we were testing the applications and services, we were automating for scalability testing the business processes. And at the time, we were thinking, actually, these business processes could be automated. Why don't we just automate them at the time? So it's yeah, something we've been familiar with and working for working with for a long time. Also works across data center transformation and also spent some time working across big data and analytics, which is becoming a key part of many types of automation, especially with the label intelligent automation coming out in the market space as well now. Definitely, thank you. Um, so to get us started, I mentioned in that introduction that we're gonna be talking about non-technical skills for scaling RPA. And I think for anybody that's familiar with this space, there's no question that a center of excellence is certainly key to scaling your solution. But we've talked a little bit about maybe some of the gaps that still exist even if you've got a great center of excellence. So could you share a little bit about some of those gaps that you've seen? Yes, yes. So firstly, having the center of excellence set up is a really good starting point. It's a, a really good model for structuring your team and understanding some of the roles and responsibilities that are needed to actually do and deliver automation, especially robotic process automation. So, yeah, it's an excellent starting place. And there's a number of frameworks that expand upon that and help that to give people more detail around it. So the Center of Excellence Framework is great in that it covers strategy, it covers the business analysis. So not necessarily a technical skill, but business analysts need to understand RPA capability as well. Yeah, it covers the development and the operational activities in it, and also some of the optimization activities that you need around as well. One thing that the frameworks and the center of excellence model really doesn't seem to, to cover, and this has been through feedback from a number of customers who are working with RPA for about three years, and business partners have been doing it for about six years, is that softer skill set. It's that how do we scale it? So it's great for scaling it from a technical perspective. It's great for being able to handle processes once they're in there. But how do you actually get those processes in the first place? How do you engage the organization? How do you educate people around what's, what's going on with RPA, what this wonderful thing RPA is, and make sure that it's seen in a positive context as well? So, yeah, we've seen some gaps in that communication, that ability to engage the organization, and sometimes quite a, a serious disconnect between what people are expecting from RPA and this, the, yeah, the, the model, as to opposed to what the organization business thinks that they're actually delivering. So, yeah, the the softer skills, the engagement, the more personal pieces around it as well. The center of excellence doesn't really teach you those, although the frameworks and models do let you know that it is important to have this process pipeline, to have this funnel coming through. So we certainly see the ability to engage organizations, a bit of the communication, and also some of that understanding and empathy from business analysts and engagement. There's certainly skill sets that are missed with the standard center of excellence model, and certainly with some of the operating model or robotic process operating models that some of the vendors have put out there, all of which are extremely useful. And one of the articles that I've read of yours, you talked specifically about three areas and kind of identified those as critical non-technical skills. And I heard you kind of sprinkling those in during our, that last question, but could you dive more specifically into those, those three main areas? Yeah, so we break it down into a framework of three real engagement points, which are skill sets in their, in their own right for organisations. Yeah, communication and engagement, it's absolutely key. And it's not just about saying, right, you know, this is what RPA is, RPA is and engage, engaging people. So I've run dozens of workshops and worked across hundreds of processes over the last few years. And we always start off by letting people understand what RPA is, what it's supposed to deliver for the organisation, well, that's sort of aligning to the organization's objectives as well. 
and helping them understand their role in that as well. Um, so what we've done is we've worked with organisations about how can you actually do this strategically? How can you communicate and engage with your organisation? And it's about utilising some of the tool sets that are around you and you have in your organisation to educate people what's going on, set their expectations and help them understand what's happening with their, within their organisation, what RPA is expected or the process automation is expected to deliver them. And there's a number of tool sets as well that you can, you can utilise, which I think we'll cover a little bit later. Um, so certainly communication and expectation setting is absolutely key for people in the broad organisation, not just when you walk them into a workshop and everybody sat around the table and they're wondering who this stranger is, stood up with a slide deck behind them, talking about robotic process automation and they've read these things and yeah, sometimes people can feel threatened by RPA. When you've communicated out and help people understand the benefits it's going to bring, the time is going to free up for them within their organisation. The repetitive tasks that potentially it can help take away so they can get on board and, and do more things and be more productive and have a more reward, rewarding work role, then yeah, yeah, that makes life a, a lot easier. So certainly communication and expectation setting. The other one is engagement. So the second phase of that is the skill set of engaging the organisation. It's great having that communication, that one-way piece going out there, but how do they then feed into you their challenges, their problems, their processes? Yeah, most projects we work on are great. We've got an organisational strategic initiative. You know, there's a problem that people are trying to solve. They've looked to automation and potentially robotic process automation as a mechanism for being able to solve that. They may need to scale something within their organisation. They may need to be able to add additional capacity and capability. They may, certainly in the NHS, want to free up time so people can do more rewarding you know, activities and deliver better patient outcomes. So... How do they engage? How do they get that feedback? So that's another key skill is that two-way engagement, that process and structure for actually getting people engaged, getting that input from them and working through, through them with that as well. And finally, the third one. Sorry. I was going to say one thing that just some other terms maybe that I've used in the past too for that communication point. A lot of times we talk about giving presentations or having conversations of the art of the possible to get people's brains moving in the right direction and getting them excited about what you're talking about. And then after those art of the possible conversations, setting up kind of what we call a triage process, so to speak, that people can come to you with your problems and you can say, yes, this is the right solution or no, let's think of a different way to approach this and kind of work through this iterative scenario where you're helping engage them, but you've got a set process that's put in place that allows you to be effective while doing that. And good business analysis involves the triage process. So we call it the same thing. Yeah, there's two times of triage. There's the it's all about qualifying and qualifying out processes. And through that communication engagement, you can educate people as to what are good processes. What I've had is with organizations, they've implemented, they've put something in, you know, one of the key vendors out there, they've got five robots that they're ready to, ready to go. And then all of a sudden there's people knocking on the door saying, Can I always make this? Can I always make this? And they're just how do we deal with this? How, how do we stop this influx of everybody wanting to automate processes and help them understand what is the right type of process? What is the right type of task? And yeah, so there's that triage, which is that qualify in, qualify out of the process. You educate the organisation so that they're aligned to objectives. They understand the capabilities of the technology. They understand what they're trying to bring to you in readiness. And then it's fantastic. You get a much better quality of pipeline process coming to triage in the first instance. We've then got a second level of triage once we've captured all those processes. Resources are typically finite in organisations. And when they're working with us to help kick off that centre of excellent formation to build up that skill set, there's another part of how do we prioritise the process? So we've got a triage, again, prioritisation. Which one are we doing first? Which one are we doing second? So it's that, that process pipeline of running through. So yeah, the, the, the triage point there is a particularly good one. Probably about 70% of the work we do is with NHS organisations. So it's a term that they're very familiar yeah. with. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry. So I interrupted you. Third, ta or third piece here. Uh, yeah, so that, that feedback loop. So um, DevOps is a, is a term that's not used very much in the RPA world, but more for development and the integration of the organisation, business and, and development. DevOps actually, those processes, those systems actually apply very much to implementing RPA because it 
really has to be a good fusion of the business organization, teams within the, the organization, and the technology development capability, because your RPA is still called development. You may have a GUI, you may enable citizen developers, you know, people actually to create their own automation processes, but even in that process creation, they're still developing and they need feedback, they need communication with people. So once you've educated out to the organization, you've set expectations, everybody's aligned to everything and you've got this great process um, pipeline coming through to you and people's expectations are set, yeah, it's absolutely key to make sure there is feedback on those processes. And an example on one of the virtual round tables that we sat because of the, the, the current situation, but one of the virtual round tables where you know, one of the, the, the team there had worked in an organization that had, had something like 2,000 processes put into them and they went, we can't handle this. Right, close that system down. Cl close that suggestions box down and then feedback about the coasters that they've captured. So absolutely essential, even if it's in you know, newsletters or the various tool sets that you can use, absolutely essential to feedback to people what's happened with their process, the reason why it can go ahead or the reason why it can't go ahead, and that's an educational process. So there's ways to educate people and feedback and constant, constant communication both ways really does help these, or these automation initiatives scale. Now, I think I got a little ahead of myself when I started talking about the idea of a triage process, um, but what are some of the tips or tactics that you have that you found that are effective in addition to that kind of triage model that help bridge some of these gaps between the center of excellence and some of these non-technical skills? Yes, yes, so there's a, a number of ways to help or activities that you can do to engage. So with works with organizations, not every organization has a business communications or a mar internal marketing communications. We work typically with mid to smaller enterprise organizations that may not have these capabilities available, but nearly everybody's got some sort of intranet. They've got some sort of newsletter that goes out internal communications out to people. They've got areas of information that people can go to and see when they're logging in. So utilizing these tool sets, utilizing these internal communication tool sets, your existing ones, actually helps get this out there. So have a regular cadence you know, every week or every couple of weeks where there's a small article, some small information about the initiative, about how what the strategic objectives are that created this initiative in the first place, what the capabilities are. And it can be a series. And there's a load of really useful information on LinkedIn and a number of series, especially Kieran Gilbury, who you've, you've had on beforehand, and Wayne, who you mentioned as well, are posting lots of information that actually can be condensed down and used to educate people. You, organizations don't even need to author this stuff themselves. They might need to condense it down a little bit, but using those internal communication tool sets to be able to get out there, updates, meetings that people have, your different departments have regular meetings, put them on the agenda and using it to communicate out and letting people educate people what it means to them and potentially their department, and what department, what their department's role is going to be in this initiative is, is a great way of, of, of getting that out there. So that's, that's, that's the first tool set for communication and letting people know. Um, the second one is about engagement. So we do a lot of process workshops. You know, people need to be in the room, say in the room. It's a virtual room these days, and we've been running some quite successfully with teams of 10 to 15 people actually attending Zoom sessions and not all talking at the same time, which is good. Everybody's got used to this, this online virtual meeting etiquette, which is absolutely great. But scheduling them ahead. So when people have their expectations, right, when will I get an opportunity to put forward my processes? When will I get a chance to tell you what the challenges are in my department, in my organization, in my job, in my role? When can I come to you and say, these are the tasks that I think we need to look at? Yeah. So it's scheduling those ahead and having a regular occurrence. So once a month, once every two or three months or once a quarter, and especially if you're just implementing RPA, you're starting off on your first two or three processes, it is about saying, great, we started, but here's the point in the future. Here's the point in one month or two months when you're going to have a voice and you're going to be able to say about this, as well as here's the email, here's the areas that we can have everything back and we endeavor to respond within you know, two or three days, days to everybody. But really, 
set these workshops and set a regular cadence and make sure people apply and send the right information in. They know what they're, they're bringing to it. They are ready for that for, for that meeting and session. Um, and, and have that so they know that's when they can come in and have that voice. And set expectations, say, right, we can only do X number of people. If you can't make it in this one, we'll get you in the next one, but please give your processes and your good ideas to us. We will review them and we will get back to you as well. And then the third one is just maybe having a dedicated side or having that inbox, having that process automation or this task or this time back, you know, name it something that resonates with the organization where people can send the processing and ask questions, put their ideas, maybe even a chat room or a Teams area where people can talk and see what previous conversations are around these sorts of things within the organization. They can see what other people are talking about. They can see what sort of response they've had from the organization as well. And you can regularly provide that feedback to them. And when you hold the workshops, let everybody know what's happening with the process. Let them know where they are on the triage. Let them know why they are on that triage process. You know, it's great. It's a good idea. It all has to be positive. But here's the reason why we can't do it at the moment. But we've addressed it. We understand. And here's our roadmap for the future to address those challenges and actually assist you better. And that was a great idea. Thanks. Keep your feedback coming. So really, those are the three sort of mechanisms for engaging the organization. Um, this, a lot of this comes down to project management and business analysis as well. Yeah. These aren't dedicated roles. You know, these people can help run these sorts of activities and administer these sorts of activities. Organisations have a huge amount of resource already available to them for not just doing these sorts of activities, but helping run the centre of excellence. It doesn't necessarily need to be an entirely new team of, ex I like to call it a centre of expertise, actually, of excellent people who are really experienced. Yeah. Utilize your own HR teams, utilize the existing marketing teams, you know, utilize managers within the organization, give them a role to play as part of the center of excellence and part of this communication engagement. And that helps make sure the soft skills are taken care of and people really have a contribution and a stake in actually delivery of that CRE and the RPA program in the organization's initiative. Thank you so much, Mark, for joining me and talking through this. I think you shared a lot of really valuable information. Um, for anybody that's interested in learning a little bit more, I would encourage you to check out Mark's LinkedIn. He mentioned some of the free resources that he contributes to, in addition to a lot of content that you share yourself on LinkedIn, articles, that type of thing. That's great. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.